Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here. Everyone knows about our best series so far, Rolling Nat 20s. Well, this time we're gonna turn back the clock and check out our funniest Nat 1 moments. But before we begin, I just want to say if you have a story to share that's either relevant to the topic of today's video or just a story in general, you can do so either on the subreddit r slash Mr. Ripper or you can post it in the comments below. We are reading them even though there are a lot of them, so don't you worry, yours is going to get read. That being said, what was your funniest Roll to One Moment Part 3? I have a wild magic sorcerer in my party. In general, she always wants to roll a one because that means the most fun wild magic. One session after a successful escort mission, the party is getting drunk at the tavern, as one does. After some peer pressure, my monk separates from the group to go have a private conversation with the noble we just escorted. And the party unanimously agrees, my monk is now on a date. Aww. While drunk casting at the tavern, the sorcerer rolls an at one while she has tides up and triggers a wild magic surge every six seconds. They're enjoying themselves for the most of it until they end up getting kidnapped by a lich. The sorcerer had used most of her spell slots while drunk casting. The party is excited because, hey, they didn't all get kidnapped. My monk is still back in town with all the sending stones the party has for various high-level NPCs. Various high-level NPCs who could rescue the group. However, the party is convinced my monk is on a date and don't want to interrupt. So, they decide to try to rescue themselves while down on resources and rolling all their checks at disadvantage due to being wasted. They did manage it in the most complicated fashion and dragged their butts home just in time for breakfast. Seeing the Baron come out of my monk's room, a moment also referenced in the Most Romantic Moments video, the cleric decided they'd done the right thing. Not me, but a fellow player. We're playing in a campaign based on the Neverwinter Nights video games, so we're in Neverwinter for the entirety of the beginning arc. I love those games. There are teleportation portals throughout the city that let you quickly go from place to place, assuming you roll high enough on your Arcana check to activate them properly. Eh, no worries. We have a wizard in the party. <laughs> Should be fine, right? Right? Oh no, not one. Now, the total was like seven. At level one, so it's not the worst, but it was bad. The DM says, Okay, roll a d100 to see where you end up, and I dare you to roll a one. <laughs> oh, don't. He rolled a one on a d100. That's impressive. After a few minutes of disbelieving laughter from around the table, the DM explains how we end up teleporting to a teleporter in the depths of a catacomb, which was broken so we could only teleport to it, but not back out. We look around and realize we've ended up in the boss battle room with the boss we've been looking for for the past three sessions. Task failed successfully. As a Goliath Barbarian with 29 strength, I tried three different things to break down a door. All three nat ones, I ended up asking the rogue to unhinge the door and I used it as a shield that gave me a plus 4 AC with a, a considerable downsides. Now, honestly, I would have smacked that DM in the head because there is no reason to make a 29 strength Goliath Barbarian roll to break down a door, especially if it's a wooden door. However, even if it's a metal door, a 29 strength Barbarian while raging has a passive athletic skills of a minimum of 21. They're getting through that door. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I rolled a nat 1 wisdom save and now I'm possessed by a rat god without picking a deity because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Oops. In this campaign, we started off in a prison camp owned by a bunch of slavers who worked for a crooked king. We were mining to pass the time and this happened. Can I roll to accidentally break the pickaxe while mining? Uh, why not? Roll for it. Eh, yeah, rolls in that one. You managed to mine out enough gems that you are promoted from prisoner to mining overseer. Rolled to seduce a minotaur. 
Roll the nat one. The twisted DM said, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> You succeed. Now roll me a new character because that one's dead. <laughs> Death by snoo snoo. Rolled a nat one on a con save against an ancient crown we got from a crazy powerful air elemental. And got turned into a pile of ashes instantaneously. Also causing a rift to the elemental plane of air to open up over where we were, from which an elder elemental came out. I was playing a half-elf ranger mercenary for this one shot. I was escorting a group of refugees escaping the tyranny of a local nation. Granted, they had attracted attention to themselves by calling out the king in public as a member of a local cult and underestimated the collective backlash. Part of the escape was getting out of the country via ship. Well, it turns out the captain of the guard and his men had been patrolling the coast for this very thing. We were found and boarded. The half-dragon sorceress in the party tried to bluff the guards by pushing my ranger against the wall and pretending to be lovers. Ooh la la. It almost worked, but the captain of the guard was the only one who rolled higher than the deception roll. Cue combat. My ranger, suited to archery on land, was caught up in the rocking of the waves and proceeded to nat one multiple rolls and hit absolutely everything in the cargo hold. Other than the guards, of course. Stray wounds were had aplenty when all was said and done, including an accidental arrow in the rear of said half-dragon sorceress. You've got a lot of ass-kissing to make up for that one, wink. I've nat one a bunch of normally mundane investigation, insight, and history rolls, as per normal. My favorite, though, was when I needed to find a way to put out a fire in the town of Greenness. Nat one, and I've completely forgotten what a bucket is. I weigh the bucket. Bear in mind, too, that this is a character which has to keep its skin wet. Or he starts getting mad real fast. So he needs to stay hydrated. Where's a small water tank? It's currently next to a river. Nope. Mm -mm, nah. Completely forgets what a bucket is, and even the word itself. When someone mentions getting a bucket, I reply, uh, uh, What? What is a bucket? while neck deep in the river. Finally, a question I can answer. So, once upon a time, I had a halfling rogue, about whose halfling luck I forgot completely. It was my first session in general, and for reasons me and the party were in a desert. Well, since my logic was that the desert gets cold at night, I made my character wear a puffer coat to sleep while proudly exclaiming, have fun freezing to death! <laughs> of course, as one can expect, and I should have expected this in hindsight, I had to roll a constitution save. Well, wouldn't you know it, I did get a nat one, and what followed was a well-deserved heat stroke. My friends and I play 3.5, and one character I play is a female half-orc barbarian fighter, Gestalt, named Bertha. This is something that happened to her. There are strange looking people holding one of your friends captive. I want to rage and rush them with my axe. Hey, what are you doing to- Roll a will save. <laughs> Did I mention that Bertha has a minus four will save? Yeah, she has a minus four will save. Oh, please roll a one. She wasn't the captive PC. The captured PC had dropped out of the game, so we had to write her character out. Bye bye. <clears throat> um, uh, that's a minus three. <laughs> Bertha, the nap sounds really good right now. Ugh, I'm gonna take a nap. We then spend the next 20 minutes unable to stop laughing. Now me, being the cheeky bugger that I am, I'm picturing life alert. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, help, I, I've fallen and I can't get up, help me. <laughs> the life alert guy comes in, what's wrong, ma'am? And he sees her on the floor and he just takes a nap instead of helping her. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bad person, I know. A fresh-ish story from a campaign I'm currently playing, starting with my World War I soldier, gunslinger, William Billy Brown. The party found me at the town hall of a small village called Ruin. Named so 
for the fact it was built over top some old ruins. Huh. The mayor, I believe, asked the rest of the party to help me get the remains of the caravan I had been traveling with back along with any survivors, if there were any. Short time later, we arrive at the crossroad where the caravan was ambushed, and we see a group of baddies still tearing up the caravan. No survivors to be seen. Trying to take the lead, as this was my intro, <clears throat> I ran forward, rifle in hand, and tried to dive behind a bush to remain hidden. <laughs> DM told me to roll a stealth check, and here I am, all excited for my first roll in this new campaign. Dun da da dun! I pick up the d20 and give it a roll. I rolled in that one. Instead of gracefully sliding behind the bush, I face plant and grind dirt into the bush, making a whole lot of sound. That's when combat began, and it went well. No one died. But considering that the next couple of sessions from that point on, the first time I rolled each session, <laughs> it resulted in that one. It's honestly pretty funny whenever the first roll of the night for me is a nat 1, so here's to many more. Oh god. Probably the time Friendly Fire spawned a side arc to revive our DMPC healer. The game? Relic Estate. The system? Pathfinder 1st Edition. Hey, virtual high five. Clink! The cast? Oh god, there's some names in here I don't know if I can say. Sukiko Maida, my enchantment wizard. Nero Lynch, the party's now gunslinger. Lazarus Jaeger, Gideon Sinclair, the party's vigilante. Think a Batman with the dual life. Mina Laken, the party's rogue. Zabala Amasa, the half elf fighter. Yuki Relia, our GMPC soft boy healer of homebrew class U. And last but not least, Kivistol the flame demon Yuki was bound to. He was successful. So by this point, we were carrying around a bunch of magic items, including one Cubix Malefix Primus, a cube with a button on each face. Each button did something different, but put all the buttons on cooldown for one week. The relevant button to this story fired a massive F-off laser beam for 36 d12 damage with a d20 check to avoid friendly fire. What the fuck kind of box is this? Well, Gideon was hanging on to the cubics and decided to use it to deal with a golem. Oh god. He kills the golem, but he also kills Yuki by friendly fire. Turns out Yuki was Kvestal's permit into the material planes, and we had to get him back. Since none of us were clerics or similar, we had to perform a ritual to reach into the afterlife to get his soul back. Unfortunately, plenty of other demons had, uh, other plans. We had to fight them off to complete the ritual. All because of a nat 1 regarding the world's most dangerous D6. After that, Sakikio kept Cubics instead of Gideon. Honestly, I would have that behind a little pane of glass that said, Break in case of Terrasque so you can tear its ass. Me and some friends did some sparring. It was me, Tiefling Battlesmith, Player 1, Satyr Fighter, and Player 2, a Tiefling Sorcerer. Near the end, the Sorcerer threw a fireball at us. Had to roll a deck save, a failure would down me, and the Sorcerer would win the sparring match. I literally said into the mic, Come on, give me that juicy net 20! I rolled, and... Net 1. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and if you have a story that you'd like to tell us that is relevant to the video or, you know, any other story in general, you can do so in two places, r slash Mr. Ripper or in the comments below. We read the comments. Go down there and start posting. Trust me, we may not reply to you right away, but we do read everything. And of course, you can come check me out, Brian Von Vier, over on Twitch or Twitter or YouTube. I'm going to have a website coming out eventually, so you're free to go just check that out anyway. I'll have Mr. Ripper put it in the description below. That being said, I always end things on a positive note, and today is no different. Everybody, as of this video, should be getting close to being done with school, if you're still in school, same with university, college, name it. And with that being said, 
I really hope anyone out there who is in education right now, I hope everything's gone well for you. I hope everything has been okay. I know it's rough. I know. Believe me, I have seen so many people, friends, family, loved ones go through education, and it's hard. But hey, even a B, a C, that all works, okay? As long as you did your best, that's great. Who cares if you didn't get the A levels that everyone else got? Who cares if you didn't have a five-star rating with this shit? As long as you did your best and had fun doing it, that's all that matters. Use that power. Go forward. And if you're not in education and you're considering it, go ahead. Try it. Do a vocational school. Do a trade school. Whatever you want to do, go take online classes for something. Have fun with it. It's your life. Live it. Increase your knowledge and just be confident in doing it. You're worth that. All the love. I'll see you later. Bye for now.